Wonderful. So we're here today with uh, some members from the New York Music Cooperative. And uh, maybe to start us off, we can just do a little round. Uh, just uh, if we could just go around one by one, say your name, uh, where you're, you're located in the city there, what borough you're in maybe, and, uh, and, and what you do uh, at the co-op. Uh, Nathaniel, you want to start? Cool. Yeah, I'll start. Yeah, I'm Nathaniel. I'm a, I'm a guitar, um, guitar instructor for the co-op. I do a couple other instruments, but that's my main thing. Um, I'm also the treasurer. I, I've been doing all the bookkeeping and stuff like that, and um, I'm in Brooklyn. Um, Stav, you want to? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm in Brooklyn, too. I I'm a voice teacher, uh, and as a part of the board member, I'm the secretary and event manager. Oh, coordinator, yeah. Ray? I suppose that, uh, sure. <clears throat> Ray Gehring, uh, another guitar instructor, co-op. Uh, and I am in Brooklyn, Kings County. Mm -hmm. The beginning of what is called Long Island. And um, there we go. So I'm Liz and I'm the newly appointed general manager. So I do a little bit of everything, answering emails, social media, figuring out the website, sending invoices. Um, I'm also going to teach guitar here and there and I'm a board member now. And I live in Brooklyn as well all right lots of is is everybody in the co-op uh in the brooklyn neighborhood or or do no, you have people all over the city yeah we're all spread out it's just all, all the board members happen to live in brooklyn except julian i guess he moved to the bronx yeah so yeah, all spread out all right. um so uh can can you guys talk just a little bit about how uh, your co-op got started. How old are you and um, or how old is the co-op and, and what led you to, to forming the co-op in the first place? Yes, yeah, so we started um, a little over a year ago. Um, I uh, So it all started I was <coughs> frustrated with my work. You know, I think um, you know a lot of musicians share that frustrated that we're all always kind of getting ripped off by people, you know, whether it's club owners or, you know, other music school owners, you know, there's, a, there's always someone just is kind of stealing your money. So I was having kind of a dispute with this place that I was a contractor for that I was teaching, uh, teaching with, and I just got really frustrated and I was hoping to find like a better, you know, better uh, work environment, you know, and I've always been interested in worker cooperatives. So I reached out to one of the co-op groups in New York, uh, in the city called Nick Knock. Um, it's the New York City Networker of Worker Cooperatives. And I asked them if there was a worker cooperative of musicians or like music teachers, because I you know, wanted to find something better. Um, and they said there wasn't, but they had a bunch of resources and they basically said, we can help you start one if you want to. So I kind of, uh, and I just went for it. I didn't really know, you know what I was doing. I was a little naive, but it, uh, it worked out. You know, we got lots of good help. Yeah, that's kind of how it happened. And to piggyback on that, when I saw that Nathaniel had uh, put out <clears throat> an ad on Indeed, as soon as I saw the headline, I said to myself, God damn it, I've had this idea for 20 years. And here comes somebody. I mean, honestly, it was like somebody had stolen it from me. <laughs> what the hell is this? And so immediately I had to become involved because... I've been involved with co-ops my whole life. My parents did too. So, and I worked in one as a paid staff. So, yeah, I'm so glad he took the initiative because obviously I hadn't yet. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the rest of us came in. Yeah, and it kind of grew. I mean, I think it's, um, you know, like I said, musicians are, are used to dealing with that. And there's not a lot of good work opportunities. So once there's something out there, you know, people kind of come to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I moved. I moved from uh, Israel two and a half years ago. I moved straight to New York, and I was a voice teacher before. 
Um, and the situation in Israel is pretty similar. The studios have so many um, expenses, and at the end of the day, their teachers hardly get paid. So I was searching for a job here, and, and I, I was very surprised to find out that it's the same and even worse in New York. Uh, <laughs> the percentage that you actually own as a teacher from what the, the clients are paying. Um, and as soon as I saw Nathaniel's ad, I was like, oh, okay, I want to be in on that. Um, so we, we kind of stuck together. Um, Julian, that is not here right now, Nathaniel Ray and I was there from the beginning, uh, and, and we are still in the board, on the board. Yeah, what drew me to the co-op was the exact same reasons. Um, I'm mainly a teacher, you know, besides gigs, and I too was fed up with music school, so I slowly built a private studio, which has been great, but I also like to, you know, have coworkers and feel like I'm on a team and I'm not just on my own all the time. Um, and I also wanted to do a job that wasn't just teaching all the time, you know, because I have some other skill sets. So that's what drew me to it. You know, if it was just another music school who needed a manager, I would not have applied. But the fact that it's a co-op is great, you know. And, and, and how, long, uh, how long ago did you guys incorporate? Uh, when did you officially begin life as a co-op? Mm, it was just about a year ago. It was official. a year ago. <laughs> took a while it's it's quite a process you know we had a you know, i think officially a year ago but yeah there's many months before that you know getting set up. okay <laughs> all right ray you settled again um oh boy uh, almost almost uh, maybe maybe you can mute that. yourself while you're setting up <laughs> Well, I'm trying to, everything keeps cutting out on me and freezing. So I think it's my connection. So I'm going to move in my room. You guys okay. continue on. Oh, um, I'm going to mute your audio, Ray. You'll have to unmute yourself when you need to talk again. Um, so I guess you guys have actually already answered my next question, which is what you were doing before you got involved in the co-op. Um, maybe you can just talk a little bit about uh, what has changed in your work life since forming the co-op and, and, and having this new way of working. Yeah, I think just, um, you know, growing, you know, all personally growing our student base, that's nice, you know, but I think we're all, we all kind of have the same goals, which is, you know, getting more independent work, more work through the co-op and less, you know, contract work. Because we all still, you know, we're all self-employed. So we, we work for the co-op, we do gigs, you know, we teach for a bunch of different schools. So, so um, you know, it's just starting, but it's on the right path of, you know, getting, you know, working for these other music schools that are kind of ripping us off and moving into that direction, growing it. Yeah, I gradually um, migrate my private studio to the co-op because I, I enjoy having a back. I enjoy having uh, other people to collaborate with, to, to actually uh, consult with on different aspects. And instead of doing all the administrative work for my business, um, I just do it with the co-op and through the co-op. So it's, it's a lot of the, the spare time that I would invest before in advertising and in, in administrative work. I do the same, but only for the co-op. So not a lot has changed, it's just shifted. Yeah, same. One thing that just popped into my head, like an advantage of the co-op teaching wise is something I get worried about sometimes is like concerts for students, how to organize all that. Cause that's something music schools, you know, and the fact that there are so many different um, instruments being learned, we could easily have chamber concerts and have our students play with each other, which I think if just popped into my head, would be really cool and would be another different aspect of um, the teaching part. Because normally, you know, you don't really have a, a pool of musicians to pull from when you're trying to put together a concert, which I've never even done. But. So that yeah, that, 
that was my dream when we started talking about um, how the co-op will actually going to look like before we incorporate it. Um, one of the things that came up was all the good things that studios and school give their students and give us as teachers. And we wanted to create a home for that as well. So creating workshops and concerts and exchanging even um, curriculum ideas and how to teach and different genres. Uh, that, that was one of the ideas that the co-op could give us. And as a private teacher, you don't have all those resources. You don't have even enough diversity with students to create something like that. Yeah, I think everything just works better as a group. Uh, when you have, it, well, it's all in the name, cooperative. Can we say any more? Yeah, definitely. Every cooperative I have ever joined, uh, with the exclusion of, you know, uh, property co-ops, which I really don't know much about, people have been largely like-minded and uh, easier to work with when you have the same goal, same understanding, same ethics, if you want to call that, um, and desire to be a part of the community in a bigger way. I, and maybe that just comes along with the territory of also being a teacher, but to me it feels like I, I have to somehow broaden uh, the range of the teaching and through a cooperative you can do that. You can put on a workshop and uh, it doesn't all fall on yourself. You have people there to back you up and to really make it a quality project. It's difficult. Yeah, and Ray, as you're mentioning being a part of the community, um, you can elaborate on, on what we do with the scholarship program. Well, the scholarship program was probably pure co-op, once again, in my opinion, you have a mission statement. Part of that mission statement is to get back a percentage, if not the larger part of your endeavor to uh, give back to the community. Uh, music scholarships are obvious choice for us. And it's as simple as understanding uh, the economic need of some family or child or student, or being told of, I've got a group of students who don't have access to music lessons. Can you give them cheap or free lessons? And absolutely. You contact principals to say, hey, is there a star student somewhere that could use trombone lessons or could use whatever lesson? What instrument do they play and could they benefit? So that's important and it, it just feels like that's the real mission of the co-op. However, we are a business and uh, it has to be business first, co-op second. And that's hard sometimes for me as an idealist, <laughs> I want to go out and do the, the co-op work, but uh, I, yeah, enough, enough said on my end, but the scholarship program is central to who we are. And it's structured in a way that it's inclusive of anybody that feels that they need access to it from a sliding fee scale all the way down to do, they pay nothing. So that's about it. That's great. Um, that's uh, really like to hear when people are putting those co-op principles into, into action and, and putting it right at the center of your business. Um, can you tell me how many uh, members do you have in the co-op right now? And, and, and how do you structure your decision making? How many of those members are on the board? Um, how does that work? Yeah, we have, um, we have about 17 members right now and we have five board members and it's, it's set up like typical co-ops. Um, we have a yearly election. So once a year we have a meeting where everyone gets together and everyone votes for five board members who serve the, the rest of the year. You know, there's, there's a process for everything. You know, if someone steps down, there's a process for electing someone. If people don't like how the board is behaving, we have it set up so members can petition to elect someone new. You know, it's just a, we try to keep it, you know, as open as possible. Oh, Josh, I forgot to mention, I'm the, I, I always forget president of the board now, I guess. So, yeah, you can put a Mr. before that if, if you don't mind. <laughs> And, and, yeah. and oh, oh, go for it, stop. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
about the uh, the co-op structure, the members are the teachers or and, and the musicians because the co-op is also about um, creating gig opportunities if we're being approached. Um, so the musicians that are teaching and gigging are the members. They pay a membership fee um, and then they benefit from the co-op um, doing all the administrative work, uh, handling payments and marketing and getting more and more students to that for them. Yeah, that kind of, um, oh. No, I was just gonna say, it's, it's funny that you say that. We have been paid, I mean, Nathaniel, we, you and I and Julian have got what, two, two paid gigs or one? Two? Yeah, I think we did one paid, one one for free. I think <laughs> for the um, Bushwick Food Co-op, we did a benefit concert. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, so in a way, the co-op is also a, a business or a, a chance for us musicians to work together too and to get more uh, offered. Somebody can hire the co-op and they can decide which type of music they want: chamber, jazz, rock. So that's also one great benefit for us that. I don't think any of us talk about a lot because the central focus now is teaching, but it's nice to have that opportunity too. Great, yeah, and that it, you've kind of already hit on on the services that the co-op provides to the members, but can you just, um, as if if I was a musician wanting to become a member, what would you be um, saying to me as far as you know what the benefits of, of membership are in the co-op? I think the the biggest one is shared advertising, you know, um, so we, you know, that's our main goal right now is to get all, all the members new students, you know, we want to link up, you know, good students with good teachers and, um, you know, and it just kind of grows from there. It's, it's great for teachers because, you know, no matter where you're teaching, you're paying, you know, some sort of fee, some sort of the um, lesson is going back to the organization. It's nice knowing with the co-op, you know, it's not like the co-op's taking your money, it's you know, you're paying a portion of your lesson fee for more advertisement. So, you know, it's a, you know, keeps, keeps growing from there. So I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. And I think just again, that, that sense of uh, collaboration where you have people to have your back, uh, you join the co-op, you have essentially, you have, you know, all of these, these members who are there to support you as well. Um, it's, it's really not like the places that we've all mentioned, we've talked before that you're an employee or you're a private contractor and you guys don't really collaborate, but you do, but it's your own efforts. And the co-op just instantly allows you a platform to sort of stand and say, well, I would like to do this. Any other members want to do this? It's a place to also develop ideas and try to, um, somebody has an idea of teaching theory on a boat. It's like, great, bring it into a bunch of people. Maybe we can create some sort of co-op cruise. If you understand what I'm saying, it's a place for ideas of even looking for more gigs as a co-op. Um, that provides a lot to me as a musician, more so even than a, than a teacher. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it kind of sums it up when, um, musicians wanting to be a part of the co-op they they can realize that the benefits would be um we take the co-op takes on all the administrative work all the advertisement they will get gain more students that way um, with only paying the membership fee but not putting so much work into that um, and the collaborative, the sky is open, as they say, whatever idea they might have. We have the resources, we have the manpower to try and pull it off together. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we yeah. can grow. We can grow because it's based on the members themselves, whatever they bring to the table. Um, so so the obviously the big situation that everybody's dealing with right now, this coronavirus pandemic, um, can you talk about how the co-op has uh, had to adjust to that and what you guys have been 
um, doing, how life has changed uh, since that's been a, an issue? Yeah, it's been, um, it's been a big adjustment and, you know, not just with the co-op, you know, every single musician in the entire world is having big life changes. You know, none of us can gig right now. You know, most of us can't teach lessons in person. So it's been, um, you know, it's kind of crazy in the music industry right now. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, it helps having the co-op, you know, right after this, you know, there was news that everything's shutting down. We got together and had a meeting and brainstormed, you know, we decided to lower prices, decided what's the best course of action for switching music lessons online, you know, so it's, it's, it's been tough, but you know, we're, we're adapting and we're, we're making it work. Yeah, and we've, um, we've spread our, our territory. So now we have some students um, from outside of New York and even outside of the, of the U United States. Uh, so, so that's been a blessed change. Uh, it, yeah, it just suddenly became the, I mean, the whole business model changes for for everybody, no matter what business that you're in. Um, if you have, if you're client facing or customer facing, I mean, there's no time to think about adaptation. <laughs> you just have to keep going with it. Um, and it's nice to be a part of the co-op because we're all just seamlessly going right into anything we establish in our business now that helps us through the pandemic uh, will just simply build upon itself later. That is good video lessons, good platforms. Um, we can maintain our international students or our uh, continental students um, through the video service and then we can, what we can do in home lessons um, it just builds upon that. So uh, to look at it objectively, COVID or the, this pandemic gives us a time to rethink a lot of people, uh, businesses, musicians, but to rethink about what's really going to work in the future anyway, because it's going to be heading this way. It always was, um, if that makes sense. It's really a good time for all of us because we can't just expect this world to be an open place for us to go travel and tour uh, it's just i mean we see what's happening around the world so at some point a lot of it's going to become video centered anyway it's, it's allowing us that opportunity to develop that part of the business so were you guys offering video lessons before uh the the covid pandemic or was that something yeah. that you added yeah, that we did offer them, but I don't think anyone took video lessons, you know, before it. Yeah, no one really wants to do a Skype lesson if you have to, but yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny, when, when COVID-19, when Shelter in Place started, we started discussing the, um, the pricing, the correct pricing for online lessons and how the, uh, should we offer packages or should it only be like, based on one lesson at a time, because no one knows what's going on and when a vaccine will, will be available. And then we remembered, oh, we actually priced online lessons before. We just never used that because <laughs> we didn't have enough inquiries. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Ray, you had mentioned that you had a, quite a bit of experience with co-ops uh, previously to to getting involved with this one. Um, I was wondering, one, Ray, what uh, you said you'd worked for a co-op, if you would you know, yeah. uh, say what co-op that was and for everybody else, uh, was this your first experience with, uh, with co-ops or was it something you had already been familiar with? I grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska and we had a fantastic food co-op there. Um, when I was a teenager, my parents, along with some other people, started a cooperative called The Gathering Place, which was uh, a place that served um, vegetarian food for the homeless and for people getting out of uh, prison or homeless shelters or et cetera, et cetera. So that was set up as a cooperative. Um, and then through college, continued shopping at the food co-op. I moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota to finish my degree. Nathaniel uh, also went to school there. 
that is arguably probably has more co-ops per square inch than any other city combined. And <laughs> I don't know if you've been to Minneapolis, but there are more than 10 co-ops. And I worked for one called Hampton Park Co-op for 11 years on staff and also on the board. Um, so it's, it's always been a part of my blood and it's always been a great opportunity because no matter how great your idea is, it's, it's got to work with everybody. So it's an immediate check. You know, you're, you're dealing with people that share your common ideals, but everybody has their different approach. And I like to be kept in check. And a co-op is a perfect place for that. So that was my life. Um, oh, I also volunteered in another food co-op in Minneapolis while working at another because uh, it was a block away from the music school um, where I went to college. And that was North Country Co-op. And uh, anyway, that's it. Yeah, uh, so co-ops have been a part of my life forever. Yeah, for me, uh, this was the first one. Um, you know, I read about co-ops and I think, you know, over the years of getting frustrated with the music industry, I had to get more and more interested in them. Yeah, but this was my first experience being a part of the co-op. Same here. Okay. Yeah, I just um, come from hippy dippy type parents. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not hippies, that's for sure. But anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it, could you, you'd mentioned that when you were getting started, you, you got some help uh, from Nick Knock. Um, it, could you just uh, maybe talk a little bit more about what? kind of uh, services they offered to you? Did you take trainings from them? Um... Yeah, um, you know, pretty much everything. You know, we, we got a ton of help starting this out and it probably wouldn't have been possible without it. You know, right in the beginning, um, we got people together and we went to their location and they gave us kind of a big seminar, you know, how they're organized and what our first steps were. Um, they also linked us up with the Urban Justice Center to get, um, you know, free legal support for drafting our bylaws. That was, you know, you know, incredibly valuable. You know, we would have been, <laughs> you know, 100% lost writing our bylaws and incorporating and stuff without the, the, the law help, you know. After that, yeah. you know, they've hired us for gigs. You know, we've got a gig doing work at their events. You know, they continue to have conferences that are helping. Um, like for the pandemic, you know, they had a um, they had a conference where they helped us sign up for the um, you know the disaster relief grants and stuff like that. So so yeah, it's been it's been a lot of help. They're pretty great. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, that's how we were able to hire Liz. Yeah, and they linked us with a printing co-op um, that are actually my neighbors. <laughs> so they help us with physical printing. <laughs> well for all our um, materials which uh, which which printing co-op is that I, I think they're called the printing co-op I'll find <laughs> yeah, it out it sounds like pretty generic like a, yeah screen printing co-op or something like that yeah um great so uh, I guess my my last question for you is it for other musicians who are interested in, in doing this kind of thing, what kind of advice would you have for them? Um, what words of wisdom can you provide to, to other people looking to get into this after your year of being a co-op now? Um, I'd say, you know, just find like-minded people and just start, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, there's probably a lot of learning uh, that you'll have to do. I mean, like me, I didn't, I didn't know anything about, you know, starting a business or starting a co-op before this, but I think it's, it's tough, but it's all manageable. So yeah, you just, you just got to get started, you know, find good people, find the help that you need and yeah, just, just go for it really. It, it does. It starts with one simple Google search as it probably did with Nathaniel too. And I did it 13 years ago, New York, uh, any music co-ops of any kind and there were So whatever your idea is, have a plan for it, number one. I mean, if you want to be a musician, you kind of should have a plan for how you're going to get better anyway. But um, when you say, what advice do we have? Do you mean as a musician or somebody that would like to follow the path of being a part of a cooperative as well? 
Either one. Uh, I mean, for for musicians who are interested in co-ops or just people in general interested in starting a worker co-op? Yeah. yeah. Reach, reach out right away. Ask your friends, who do you know in a co-op and start from there. Don't go any broader than you have to. And start I'd say read the newsletters you're subscribed to. You know? <laughs> Because I was subscribed to uh, Spoke the Hub, and a lot of times I just want to ignore newsletters, you know, but I just make myself read them all, and then I saw this job opportunity. So, you know, if you have connections, make sure you don't ignore them, and it's easy to just, like, get overwhelmed by emails and social media, but just focus and read things and stay interested in the people you know, and opportunities come up that way when during a pandemic, you know, when you don't expect anything to come up. So, yeah. yeah. Stav, do you have any words of wisdom to share? <laughs> oh, you're on mute. I'm just so embarrassed that I can't remember their name. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I really agree with what Liz said. You know, I, I want to get out of social media and I want to turn all notifications off, but every once in a while, while you find an ad and you find an opportunity that is super valuable um, and you realize it only once you actually meet in person. It's funny. It always looks like catfishing at first, but um, just say yes to everything before you turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's because you can always say no later. That is true. <laughs> but you can't always say yes later. <laughs> so if, uh, if anybody watching this or listening is um, interested in, in connecting with you guys to get a music lesson, since you're now doing online all over the, the country and the world, it sounds like, uh, how, how would they do that? Uh, you can check out our website. It's nymusiccoop.com, and we're active on you know uh, social media, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, yeah, all, all all of our things are just nymusiccoop.com. Yeah, the email is nymusiccoop at gmail. All right. Yeah. Any uh, uh, there's any closing thoughts, anything that you didn't get to say that you'd, you'd want to say? Uh, now's, now's your opportunity. Well, thank you for wanting to talk to us. Period. You know, okay. nothing's more important than, what's the adage? Whatever we do is most important to us. So uh, we're so glad when someone else really wants to know what, what we're doing. Yeah. So thank you, Josh. It's, it's nice of you. Yeah, and we, we hope to change, to gradually um, be a part of the change of how people see music education and treat music educators. Yeah. And it, it just starts here with us saying this is what we need as musicians and as a community and as teachers, and maybe it will form a precedent in the future. Yeah, definitely. And the co ops yeah. always here for free advice too. People can <laughs> write their frustrations and we'll we'll help them through. No no charge. Yeah, definitely. If there's any, you know, especially musicians that are, you know, looking yeah. to start a co op, reach out to us and we'll help. You know, we're all we're all passionate about the music we do. We're all passionate about, you know, forming work worker cooperatives and you know ultimately it'd be great, you know, it's our dream is that every musician can band together and you know, work together. So yeah, reach out to us. Absolutely.